¿Cómo está usted? Buenos días, buenos días, hermanos y hermanas. How are things going today? We're reading in Hebrews, and today is a great day. Um, we are going into chapter 12, and there's only 13 chapters in Hebrews, so we are nearing the end. Someone already wrote me and said, where are we going to go after Hebrews? By the way, I thank you for those of you who watch every day. I hope this is a blessing to you. I prayed before I started taping here with my friend Stephen here that God would give me words to say to encourage you for this day. I can't encourage you yesterday. I wish I could. Well, if you watch it yesterday, maybe I did help you in some way. But I can't encourage you for tomorrow, today. Today's the day. Come on, let's zero in. Today is the only day of my life. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. No matter what mess ups in the past, I can walk with the Lord today, and you can too. Chapter 12, therefore, wherefore. Whenever you hear therefore, you ask wherefore. And it puts you to what's before it. Therefore, because of this list uh, in chapter 11 of the preeminence of faith and all the men and women, imperfect as they were, they kept on believing and they show the great power of faith in God. And they illustrate that God is pleased by faith, not by performance. Why? You're saying, oh, you're, you're hinting at it no matter how you live. No, don't you get it? Unless you have faith in God, you'll never change the way you live, and me too. Faith brings God's power in our life to make us like Christ. We skip that step and end up falling down, stumbling. Making vows, oh, I'm going to be good today. You ever do that? Uh, I'm going to change this Bible translation. The thing is no good because I've been messing up. No, no, it's trusting God. So now, chapter 12. Therefore, because of the importance of faith, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, what witnesses? The people have gone before us. Some people have said they're, we're surrounded as in an arena and they're actually watching and looking down at us. That might be true. I don't want to debate it. I don't know if people in heaven are watching what we're doing every moment of every day. But we're surrounded in a metaphorical sense by this great cloud of witnesses. So what? Let us throw off Christian. Throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Okay? Let's unpack it. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us throw off the weights and the sin that so easily entangles us. Throw off is the verb here that hinders and the sin. Okay, stuff hinders and then there's sin. All got to be thrown off. Why? So we could run the race. So things that hinder, why is that different than the sins? Because there are some things that are not outright listed sin but they're things that just weigh us down. There, you know, I was, I was in University of Rhode Island, a basketball scholarship, walked by a room where the track coach was uh, giving a pep talk to the track team for, the, for URI. It was at the beginning of the season and he said, everybody, you got to be in shape. You can't run races if you're not in shape. He said, okay, so if you took a five-pound weight and put it on one shoulder, another five-pound weight on the other shoulder. All right, get down. Go to your starting block. We're doing a uh, 440 race. 
Not 100 yards, 440. Ready? Get set. Everybody takes off. And he says, you're running. Uh, there's a little problem. You got 10 extra pounds you got, excuse me, got to carry. Five pound weight, five pound weight. Is that fair? No, that's not fair. Well, that's the way it is when you're 10 pounds overweight. Lay off that weight, he said. You got to get in your, in, your, in your peak condition. There's your right weight to do sports, given your height, your build. So here the writer, the writer is saying, let's throw off not only the sins that entangle us, but the weights that hinder us. Are there things going on in your life that take, your, take, take your cell phone? There's no Bible verse that says don't use a cell phone. But if you're spending so much time in it and you're addicted, I, listen, I know people, I don't allow it in my office now. And I saw it happen the other day. I, I didn't want to call the person out. There were people around. But you're talking to people and they go, yeah, so here's their view. They say something. Now you're going to talk and they go. What is that? You can't even have a conversation. That restaurant I was in in Chicago jumped out at me. Uh, sitting next to me, was uh, two girls who were going out for lunch. They seemed to work in the same place. They were in a booth opposite mine. They never said one word to each other in 15 minutes. They were both on their phone. Then why eat? Why eat with each other? You're not going to talk. But can't that phone, which is not a sinful thing, can it get out of control and hinder us from la Biblia, the Bible? from time alone with God, from being quiet. You know, to cultivate your spirit, you have to spend time quiet. L let me give you a, a hint here. Get alone with God in the morning and don't read a verse or whatever. Just sit, yeah, say whatever your prayer is, but then sit absolutely still in God's presence. It'll help you spiritually immensely. It always does me. Be listening for him. Obviously, if a thought comes a need, you can pray it. But you got to be still. You got, And that takes time. Studying the Bible takes time. Working for Jesus takes time. Helping others takes time. And if our time is wrapped up with uh, binge watching um, uh, uh, some TV show or, or just preoccupied with our phone and social media, Let's, come on, throw that baby off. Throw that thing off. Why run the race with those weights on you? Come on, we need endurance. Let's get in shape spiritually. Blessing, see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.